So in the last lecture, we have finished Lenz law. So we will start a uh, motional EMF today. So you are left with just two uh, topic. One is motional EMF and another is induction. So in induction, we have further two more topics, self-induction and mutual induction. That's the last part of this chapter. So, uh, so understand what does motional, am I audible? Uh, So motional EMF means whenever a conductor moves in a magnetic field such that the magnetic field length and velocity are mutually perpendicular, then we say that this is the case of motional EMF. Some EMF gets induced inside the conductor. So motional EMF means if you have a conductor, this is some magnetic field and this is the conductor. The length of the conductor is L. The strength of the magnetic field is B. This conductor is moving with a velocity B. So the EMF induced across the conductor is minus of B L V. The cause of this EMF is the motion of conductor. So the EMF induced in the conductor due to its motion is known as motional EMF. We will derive this expression. This is B length of conductor, V is velocity. But to use this expression, the important thing is B should be perpendicular to L, should be perpendicular to V. These terms are important. We'll drive it later. If they are not perpendicular, like you can have this case also. This is the magnetic field. This is length L. And the velocity of conductor is making an angle theta with the length. So here velocity is not perpendicular to length. So whole velocity will not contribute to induced EMF. So what you can do is you can just take the components of velocity. Take one component, which is V cos theta. Take another component, which is V sin theta. And call this V sin theta as V perpendicular. So this V sine theta is responsible for the induced EMF. So you can say that EMF induced in the conductor is minus of B, which is the strength of magnetic field, length, and the perpendicular component of velocity. So again, V, L, and V perpendicular are mutually perpendicular. So in short, the EMF induced in the conductor due to its motion is known as motional EMF. And for motional EMF, these three terms should be perpendicular to each other. Now, to derive this expression, what we can do is a small two line calculation. So, to derive it, what we did, we take a coil. And then we take a conductor over the coil and this conductor is moving with a velocity. This symbol shows that the conductor can slide over the coil, like this conductor can slide over this wire. If I draw it in this way, this will mean a permanent contact. But if I draw it in this way, uh, this semicircle thing, that means the contact is not permanent, it can slide over. Now, you're supposed to calculate the EMF induced in it. Let's say the length of the conductor is L. This separation is X. The strength of magnetic field is B. So, uh, Akshay, what is the formula for calculating flux? What's the formula for flux, Akshay? Sefula, yes. B A cos. Sorry, say something. Sir, did we do anything before this? No, nothing. That's the first topic. Yeah. So the flux is B A cos theta. This is the expression of flux. So the flux will link with this coil is B A cos theta. B strength of magnetic field. How much is this area? This area, Nabil Khan? Uh, 
how much is this area? One side is L, another is X. I'm asking how much is this area? How much is the area of this coil, Abil? The, it's a rectangle. Uh, Abil, 2LX. Triangle. Yes, sir. No, not 2LX. See, I'm not asking about the parameter. I'm asking about the area. Area is a rectangle length into breadth. Huh? One side oh, is L, another is X. So area is LX. So the flux will be BLX. And how much is angle cos theta is zero? Why cos theta is zero? It's because magnetic field in inverse. And the direction of area vector is perpendicular to the plane of area. So area vector is always so inverse. So both the vectors are inverse, so angle is zero degree. So this is BA, BLX. This is the flux. Now, is it a constant flux or a variable flux, Hishma? Is this BLX is a constant or a variable flux? Hishma. Minashi, is it a constant or a variable flux? This BLX. Sir, so it varies because of area. It varies because of X, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the area varies and area varies because of this X. This X is variable, so it's a variable flux. What is Faraday's law, Cephula? Um, epsilon equals to d, d, d pi by dt. Yeah, EMF, right? Epsilon is EMF. Yes. So Faraday's law says induced EMF is rate of change of flux. So induced EMF will be rate of change of flux. Let's start calculating. So we can easily calculate induced EMF now. Induced EMF is minus of d phi over dt. So it's minus of d over dt of blx. So what are constant in this equation? D is a constant. So you can take this constant out of this derivative. L is a constant. You can take this L outside the derivative. So we have minus of bl dx over dt and what is dx over dt dx over dt is nothing but the velocity of the conductor it's v it's velocity of conductor right so you can say that induced emf is minus of bl into v this is induced EMF. and this negative sign here shows lens law now we know how lens law works huh? we already did lens law so this negative sir, sign shows. Yes. Sir, but in textbook they said dx by dt is equal to minus v, sir. Dx by dt is minus v, sir. So they got mf emf is uh, blv. So that depends how they are like. Uh, what is the direction of their velocity? If they take conductor in this direction. And they say that this direction is positive. This direction is negative. Then they're can write it as v is minus of dx over dt. So all depends upon the direction, in which direction you are taking your positive sign and which direction you are taking your negative sign. Yes, sir. It's just a matter of reference. Like positive negative is your convention. Won't affect it. So this negative sign is representing lens law. If I say that R is the resistance of the entire circuit, R is the resistance of circuit. Means this whole circuit, this whole circuit here, the resistance is R. Akshay, if R is the resistance, then how will you calculate induced current? Uh, IR. I, I. Current is I, na? So you have EMF. How do you calculate current? For oh, current, uh -huh. yes. EMF is given. E by R. This is given. E by R. So the induced current I will be. It will be ratio of EMF and resistance. So it's minus of BLV divided by R. 
So this negative sign again shows that the lens law. Negative sign represents negative. Now, after induced current, we need magnetic force acting on the wire. We need magnetic force on wire. Now see how to calculate this magnetic force. So in magnetics, we did one topic where we have a, had a magnetic field. And in that magnetic field, we placed a current carrying conductor. And we call that the length of the conductor is L and this angle is theta. Or we can say that flux is its B A cos, sorry, not flux. So you have a current carrying conductor of length L in a magnetic field. So this conductor will experience a magnetic force. Well, the formula for force, the formula for force is I L B sine theta. This is how you can calculate the force acting over the wire. The formula for force is I L B sine theta. So here also, so if you look at this figure, some induced current will flow through the wire. So using Lenz law, you can decide the direction of current will be upwards. So this, you have a current carrying wire placed in a magnetic field. So this current carrying wire should also experience a magnetic force. The magnetic force like this, this magnetic force. For this magnetic force, you need a wire which is carrying some current placed in a magnetic field. Magnetic field will exert some force over the wire, which is IAB sine theta. Same force will act over this wire also. So first of all, we need the magnitude of the force. So the formula for calculating magnetic force is it's I L cross B naught. See, usually length is a scalar quantity. But when we use this relation, we consider length as a vector. That means we are providing some direction to the length. The direction of length is same as that of current. I'm repeating again, cur although current length is a scalar quantity. But when we use magnetism, we often consider your length as a vector. So to consider your length as a vector, you should provide some direction to length. The direction of length is the same as that of current. So if the current is upwards, that means length is upwards. Now I need angle between L and B. So this is your magnetic field, which is in inverse direction. And this is your current, which is in upwards direction. So your current and magnetic fields are mutually perpendicular. So if they are mutually perpendicular, then you can easily open this cross product. When you open this cross product, this is I L B sine 90. Sine 90 is one. So you can write that your magnetic force is I L B. Let's call this as equation number four. Sir, it is the same direction of induced current, sir. Then... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because there is only one current and that is induced current. Sir, but induced current is not a vector, right, sir? Induced current is? Not a vector, right, sir? Yeah, current is not a vector. Not just induced current, but any, any current is not a vector. But we provide length the direction of current. We don't say that current is a vector, but we say length is a vector which have the direction of current. This is how we uh, write ampere circuit law, right? When we did ampere circuit law, we wrote DL cross B by RQ, huh? So here DL was a small length vector. And what was the direction of the length vector? The direction was same as that of current. So we're not saying that current is a vector, but still current have a direction. We're providing that direction to length. Okay, Amit? Yes, sir. So what, what we can do is, this is induced current, and this is the equation of induced current. We can substitute two in four. When we substitute two in four, we can get the formula of magnetic force. How much is I? It's minus of BLV divided by R multiplied by L multiplied by B. So this is minus of B square L square V by R. This is magnetic force. L square by R. This is the formula for calculating.
Okay, now let's decide the direction of magnetic force. Apply right hand thumb rule to get the direction of magnetic force. Okay, Arpit. Apply right hand thumb rule. So, will you apply right hand thumb rule? Place your finger in the direction of current in upwards direction. And then curl it towards the magnetic field. Thumb is going in the left side direction. That means force will act in the left side direction. I'm repeating it again. For the direction of magnetic force, place your finger in the direction of current upwards. Then curl it inwards towards the magnetic field. This thumb will give the direction of force. So force is to the left hand side. This is the direction of force, magnetic. So the direction of magnetic force is left hand side and the velocity is right hand side. So magnetic force will oppose the velocity, which is again a form of Lenz law. Lenz law says whenever you take, uh, whenever you have some induced EMF, the induced EMF will oppose its cause. Here the cause is velocity. So the EMF is opposing this velocity by applying a force in the left hand side direction. So this is the magnetic force which is acting on the wire. You can say that you can interpret this negative sign in two ways. So this negative sign shows that direction of force is opposite To velocity. This negative sign also shows Lenz law. So both are the same thing. Now, force is opposing the velocity and that is the essence of Lenz law. Lenz law says that force will act in a direction so that it will oppose its cause. That's changing the cost. Okay, now let's answer a few questions. Hishma, are you in class? Yes, sir. Hishma, this force is acting in what directions? The direction of force is same as that of velocity or opposite to that of velocity? Opposite to velocity. So due to this force, velocity should increase or it should decrease? It will decrease. It will decrease. Means slowly, when this force acts, the velocity will decrease. So velocity will keep on decreasing and finally at a time, velocity becomes zero. When velocity becomes zero, then what will happen with the conductor? It will still move, it will come to rest. Velocity it becomes zero, that means conductor will come to rest. When the conductor will come to rest, then induced EMS will become zero. So this force is opposing its cause. But if I want to move this conductor with the same velocity, I want my current to be steady. I want a steady current in the system. So what I will do is I will apply an external force in a direction which is opposite to that of the magnetic force. Magnetic force is opposing this velocity, but I'm applying some external force. Like by my hand, I'm trying to pull this wire to the right hand side with an external force. This external force will support the velocity. So you can say, So to move this wire with a constant velocity V, you will need an external force. So we'll apply an external force on the wire. Huh? We'll say that external force to be applied on the wire. So the external force that need to be applied on the wire, what is the direction of external force with respect to the magnetic force, Minashi? External force will act in the same direction of that of velocity or in, op oh, sorry, uh, of the magnetic force or in opposite direction? Opposite. Opposite. So I can write this as minus of FD. This minus sign means these two forces are acting in opposite direction. But, then, but the equality shows that they have same magnitude. So you can say that external force will be equal to magnetic force. Magnetic force is B squared. 
This is the external force acting on the wire. Next. After this external force, what else we can do is, this is the equation three. This is the equation. So, okay, just note it down, then we will calculate power. We'll also prove that energy conservation is obeyed here. Just note it down. And tell me your doubts when, I, when you are taking the notes. Noha, Yashika, any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Nabil Khan? No, sir. Nabil Khan, why are we applying the external force here? We applied some external force, right? Why we are applying that external force? Uh, to keep uh, velocity. Very good. So there are two major topics in EMI which are left. One is motional EMF, another is induction. We just show that uh, uh, graph on the right side. Yeah. See, this figure shows that if conductor is not moving perpendicular, like if its velocity adds, is at some angle to the length, then we take the component of velocity which is perpendicular to the length. And this component will contribute to it. So while using this formula, always remember B, L, V are mutually perpendicular. If they are parallel, that means no induced EMF. Answer. Sir, here the magnetic field is uniform or not uniform, sir? It's a uniform field. If magnetic field is non-uniform, then you will uh, calculate EMF for a small region, then you will integrate it over the entire thing. If field is non-uniform, here is a uniform field. So the magnetic field will apply force on the left hand side and we are applying force on the right hand side. Sir. Yes, just because if we don't apply external force, then conductor will stop ultimately. Huh? Yes, sir. Like you take a conductor, you now you understand why I uh, keep this negative sign here. 
because this negative sign is telling me the direction of the force also it's telling me that force is acting in a direction which is opposite to that of velocity sure sir theta is zero guess hai it's because magnetic field is inverse and when you take perpendicular to the plane of the coil that perpendicular is also inverse so both vectors are in same direction so angle will be same because area vector is perpendicular to the coil no that is inverse sir outwards jo hai that's your choice you can take outwards or inwards because if i take this the the direction is perpendicular it could be this or it could be this well it will be inwards or outwards that's my choice if i take outwards that angle will be 180 degree your flux will become negative physically you can't explain why the flux is negative so that's why we try to uh, you know we don't want to keep that negative sign so we want to avoid that negative sign so we don't consider 180 degree we consider zero degree okay Yes, okay. Tell me if you have doubt in any step. Huh? Okay, Omar, Mr. Mr. Yes. Mr. How we got the figure, sir? This one. This one. Little bit. Yes, no, sir. The next one. This that one. one. Right yes. one. Yes, sir. So this is just uh from the magnetics. This is magnetic field. In magnetic field, we placed a current carrying conductor. So I am just recalling the concept of magnet magnetics here. So if, if you take a current carrying conductor in magnetic field. then magnetic field will exert some force over the conductor and that force is this i lb sin theta this is i what i am discussing
Okay, so if you place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, then magnetic field will exert some force over the conductor, and that force is this I and B sign theta. Yes, sir. Can I scroll it further? No one minute, sir. Yes, sir. Then. Can I scroll it further? Everyone have written up to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's discuss power. So you can see where you apply right hand thumb rule again. Mm -hmm. We need the direction of magnetic force. Huh? For the direction of magnetic force, we need right hand thumb rule. So magnetic force is this I L cross P. So what we can do is we place our finger in the direction of current. Current is upwards. Then we curl it towards the magnetic field. So if you see, thumb is going in the left first direction. Are you getting direction in the left side? Yes, sir. That's right. So F external is B square L square V by R. The next up is power. See, we have two types of power. One is electrical, uh, electrical power, and other is mechanical power. So let's see what does electrical and mechanical power means. Could you scroll a little bit as then last? Mm 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next is power. See, when you start moving this conductor, then some current get induced into your system. So there is some electrical power in the system, or you can say some electrical power get generated. What is the formula for calculating electrical power, Yashika? You have current, you have resistance. What is the formula for calculating electric power? Sir, I square R T. I square R. When you apply, when you multiply with T, it becomes heat. So power is I square R. So see, when you move this conductor, some starts, some current gets induced in it. That means the system will have some electric power. So you can say that electric power. In the conductor is I square R, and what is I? I is it's this. This is the current of I minus of B L B by R minus of B L V by R whole square multiplied by R. Then you have B square L square V square by R square multiplied by R. R and square will cancel each other, so you can say the electric power is it's B square, L square, V square divided by R. So this is the electrical power generated. Now, what is the source of this electric power? See, we can't create power. Power means energy, energy per unit time. If I am saying this power means I am saying energy in unit time. So from where does this electrical energy get? See, initially your system does not have current, so initially your system does not have electrical energy. But when this conductor moves, some current comes into the system, and some electrical power is also there. So, what is the source of that electrical power? How, from where, which source this electrical power came? See, we can't create power. Huh? We cannot generate power. We cannot create energy. So, what is the source of this electric power? If I so give you yeah, which sorry which one the external force that we apply yeah the external force we apply the external force the, the agency which is applying this external force which will spend some energy that energy gets stored in the system in the form of electrical energy so you can say that external power spent by the source which is providing external force. Will get stored in the system in the form of electrical energy. So we can calculate. This is a electrical power generated. The next is mechanical power applied. Or you can say mechanical power spent. So the formula for calculating mechanical power is basically this: mechanical power is the dot product of external force and velocity. This is the formula for the mechanical power, F external dot. So if you look at this figure, then F external and velocity are acting in same directions. If they are acting in same directions, that means angle. Oh, sorry. sorry. Angle between them is zero, so you can say this is F external into V into cos zero. Cos zero is one, so you can say that mechanical power is external force multiplied by velocity. So if I call this equation as five, and I call this equation as sixth, we have already calculated this external force. External force in equation number four, so we can substitute four and six. So when we substitute four and six, we get mechanical power as we will get that mechanical power P mechanical is F external, which is B square L square V by R multiplied by B. So this comes out to be B square L square V square by R. L square V square divided by R. So this is the formula for the mechanical power spent. Now you can see 
द मैकेनिकल पावर स्पेंट इज एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द इलेक्ट्रिकल पावर जनरेटेड सो फ्रॉम वेयर डज दैट इलेक्ट्रिक पावर इज कमिंग इट्स कमिंग फ्रॉम द मैकेनिकल पावर ओन सो द एनर्जी दैट यू स्पेंट इन मूविंग द कंडक्टर दैट एनर्जी गेट्स कन्वर्टेड इन टू इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी सो यू कैन से दैट पी मैकेनिकल इज इक्वल टू पी इलेक्ट्रिकल सो यू कैन राइट हेयर दैट पी मैकेनिकल will be equal to p electrical so you can say that energy is conserved or you can say because we all these directions of force current everything come from lenz law so you can say the energy is conserved because of lenz law or you can say that this is the proof that lenz law is in accordance law of conservation of energy note it down usually it's a derivation five marker derivation when he asks you do calculate all things emf current force power with no it don't so the mechanical power that you spent will get stored in the system in the form of electrical energy or electrical power sir time sorry the so time one second dear yes time is one second tell me once you have written now Yes, can I scroll it now? Yes, everyone have written. Rishma, Noha, Alia. No, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. So next, uh, it's question, sir. Could you show the final expression? Yes.
Yes, can I change it now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, this is a formula based thing. Huh? Induced EMF induced in the conductor and uh, electric power. Let's do it. It's a formula based thing. Please do it and write your answer in chat room. The length of the conductor is 10 meter. Velocity, it's moving with 5 meter per second. The magnetic field is 2 tesla. Do it. Please write your answers in chat on the formula based thing. Answers. Okay, I got answer from Akshay, Noha, Yashika. It's okay, Nabil. Nabil Khan. Answer for electrical power resistance is not given. Oh, resistance is not given. Yes. Let's say resistance is 5 ohm. Hishma, Minashi, Saifullah, answers? Yes. I got just four answers, five till now. Yes, Akshay, R is five. R is five ohm. Right. Nabil Khan. Okay, Oneeb. Okay, Saf. Okay, Akshay, you're right. Nabil Khan, I haven't got any answer from you. Not even for, for part one. So Nabil, is power to force into velocity? Force into velocity, yes, you can do that. But ultimately, when you are doing force into velocity, you're driving this relation. We have already derived it. So it's better if you use this direct formula. Because when you are doing force into velocity, that means you are deriving it. So see the straightforward thing. Na? EMF is minus of VLV. B is 2, L is 10, V is 5 meter per second. It's minus 100 volt. 100 volt. When you need power, then this is just B square, L square, V square divided by R now. So how much is B? B is 2 Tesla. It's 2 square. How much is L? L is 10 meter. It's 10 square. 
how much is velocity it's 5 square divided by r it's 5 it gets cancelled out so the power is it's 4 into 5 20 and then 2000 this is formula based you should know how to use these relations sir minus 100 tesla right no you are calculating a voltage not magnetic field tesla is the unit of magnetic field induced emf is a voltage in volt Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. So that was uh, something very straightforward. Now, next we will. Uh, okay, we'll do more questions, but first, just learn how to get the direction of EMF. See, this wire has some induced EMF, so this will have negative and positive potential. To decide the negative and positive potential of the wire, what we can do is use uh, this. Is such, don't use. Don't use this law. I'll teach you something else. So decide to decide the direction of induced EMF, like which end of the wire is negative and which end of the wire is positive, we will be using magnetic Lorentz force only. Using magnetic Lorentz force, you can decide like which end of the wire will behave like the positive terminal and which end of the wire will behave like the negative terminal. There are several methods to decide like which end will behave like positive and which end will behave like negative to decide polarities of the event. See how to decide the polarity. See, this is the magnetic field. This is conductor, length of the conductor is L, and this is moving with a velocity. So one end of this conductor will behave like the negative terminal, another end will behave like the positive terminal. So you just have to decide when, which end will behave like negative and which will behave like positive. To decide what you can do is take one electron of the conductor and just decide the direction of magnetic force. Which magnetic force? This magnetic force, magnetic Lorentz force. Huh? It's Q, V cross P. Just decide the direction of magnetic force on the wire. How we decide the direction of magnetic force? We have did this in chapter number four also. Just place your finger along velocity and curl them towards magnetic field. What is the direction of thumb? Everyone write in chat room. And this figure, just place your finger in the direction of velocity and curl it towards the magnetic field. What is the direction of the thumb? Where is your thumb going? Okay, Noah is getting the right answer. What about the rest? Yashika, Minashi, no, no. Minashi, it can't go left. Okay, everyone is getting, no, not, it, it, it can't even go outward. See, just take your fingers, place it along x-axis and then curl it inwards. You should get upwards direction. Sefuda and Minashi, just apply right hand thumb rule again. Just place it in the direction of velocity and curl it in the inverse direction. What direction are you getting? It's in, it's upwards or outwards? Upwards. Minashi, are you getting upwards now? No, sir. No. See, place your fingers, take your right hand, place your finger along x axis. Okay. On your notebook, like uh, it would be better if you uh, do it in your notebook. Place your notebook here. On your notebook, draw x-axis and place your finger on the notebook inwards. Along the x-axis, your finger. Then curl it in the inwards direction. Just tell me where your thumb is going. Y, Z, where? Minashi. Sir, I'm not getting. You're not getting, okay. See, on your notebook, draw these axes, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Huh? Then take your right hand and place your finger along on the x-axis in this way, along x-axis, okay? Then curl it in the inverse direction, inwards, into the plane of your copy. 
Upward. Okay. Upwards. Along y axis. All right. On your notebook, you're getting your thumb along y axis, yes? Yes. So that is the direction. That should be the direction of force. It should be along y axis. But electron is a negatively charged particle. Right hand thumb rule gives the direction for the positively charged particle. So for negatively charged particle, what we'll do is we will just reverse it. What, whatever the direction you are getting from right hand thumb rule, just reverse it. So what will be the movement? Electrons will come here. So this will become negative and this will become positive. One end is negative, another is positive. Yes. So where so your electron will move in the downwards direction. So this end will become negative due to accumulation of electron. And this upwards end will become relatively positive. So this is the polarity. This is negative and this is positive. Is it clear? Everyone, this is very, very important. You will need these uh, polarities and numericals. Using right hand thumb. Nabil, Akshay, Unib. Yes, sir. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, let's just note it down. Then we'll do a few questions on motion. We'll wind it up. Yes, upwards is positive y-axis, no? Actually, upwards means positive y-axis. Downwards means negative y-axis. Please note it down. Sir, how will we get on z-axis? Uh, your force along z-axis. For force along z-axis, your magnetic field should be along y-axis. So if you place your finger along x-axis and curl it towards y-axis, in this particular question, your magnetic field is along z-axis. But if in some question it is given that magnetic field is along y-axis and place it along x-axis, curl it towards y-axis, thumb will go outwards, force will go outwards. Okay. Yes, written. Sir, here we are finding the force acting on electron, right, sir? Yes. So, the direction of force be the direction where it is having negative polarity. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. Because electron will move in the direction of force. No? So electron gets accumulated in the in downwards direction. So you have more electrons here. You have more electrons here. Means more negative charge here. Negative potential here. And if it is negative, then upward should be positive. More electrons means more negative charge means negative potential. Less electrons means leg negative charge means positive charge means positive potential. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, let's do few questions on motional EMF, some straightforward thing. So the first is this. Your conductor is moving parallel to magnetic field. I'm writing the logic here. Conductor is moving parallel to B. So what is the angle between V and D here? And D. Degrees. Zero degrees. 
zero degree. They are moving parallel. That means angle is zero degree. Angle is zero degree. That means force will your induced EMF will be zero. For induced EMF, your BLV, your BL and V should be mutually perpendicular. Here V and B are parallel, so induced EMF is zero. No induced flame. Next part. See here also. Your conductor is moving in this direction. So what is the angle between length and velocity? Conductor is moving along x-axis. Length is also along x-axis. What is the angle between L and V? Pass zero degrees. Zero degree again. So if velocity is parallel to length, then again induced EMF will be zero. For induced EMF, your conductor should be perpendicular. B, L, and V should be mutually perpendicular. If they are not perpendicular, you will not get EMF. Your induced EMF will be zero. So here is zero. This is also zero. Let's note it down. So if you get these two cases in exam, you can directly write it to be zero. It's zero. You won't get any. Here. Sir, zero Q. Zero Q. See, if this is the electron, huh? if electron is moving parallel to magnetic field, that means magnetic force on the electron is zero. It will be Q, V, B, sine zero. It will be zero. If no force is acting over the electron, that means electron will not move. If electron will not move, that means there is no negative and positive potential. You, there will be negative and positive potential only if one end have higher number of electron than the other end. If throughout the wire, the distribution of electron is uniform, that means you don't have negative and positive charges. You don't have negative and positive potential, means no EM. Okay? Okay. Yes, Then if it is anti-parallel, then then again the same thing. If it is anti-parallel, that means again angle is uh, 180 degree sine 180 is zero. Yes, Answer. Okay.
Because if you take this electron here, uh, this electron will experience force in upwards direction. All electrons will experience force in upwards direction. But since you have this wire, the wire is one dimensional. There is no space for electron to move in the upwards or downwards direction. So again, the distribution of charge will remain uniform. For this uniform distribution, no electron is going upwards, no going downwards. So there won't be any potential difference. See the one dimensional wire. No, there is no space for the electrons to move in upwards or downwards direction. Yes, everyone have written up to here? One minute. Now the third interesting case is what happens if this uh, conductor starts rotating in the magnetic field. If it is moving perpendicularly, then you have induced EMF, which is minus of BLB. The next interesting thing is, if this conductor starts rotating in the magnetic field, then what will happen? And that's one of the most important things. Tell me once you have written, I'll scroll it over. That's it. Sure. For the next question, uh, you should know a topic from class 11. Like if a body is moving on a circular track and if I say that angular velocity is omega and the radius of the track is r, then linear velocity is always tangential. Linear velocity is always tangential and linear velocity v is equal to omega. V is angular velocity multiplied by the radius of the path. That is the relation between the linear velocity and the radius of path omega. Just note it down. We'll use this concept in the next question. So if a body is moving on a circular track with an angular velocity omega, it will have some linear velocity also. The direction of linear velocity is tangential. Every, at every point, you can put a tangent. This tangent will give the direction of linear velocity. And you can say that linear velocity is angular velocity multiplied by the radius of the path. So we use omega. So the angular velocity is also along the tangent, sir. No, no. Uh, about of the conductor about which the things are rotating. It's not tangential. It's along the axis. Like if a fan is rotating, then the angular velocity of fan is not tangential. It's along the axis of the fan. Linear velocity is tangential. Yes. It is towards the center, sir. Uh, no, the axis is passing through the center. No? So if this is the axis, the thing is rotating about itself. It's like, so I'll, you can see this pen. This pen is the axis and something is rotating about it. So the direction of this angular velocity of rotating body is about the axis. And yes, axis passes through the center of the body. So the direction is angular velocity here in this case is inwards. So, so it would be like out of the plane? Into the plane. For this particular case, into the plane. If it is going clockwise, then into the plane. If it goes anti-clockwise, then out of the plane. Yes. Here again, we use right hand thumb. We will just curl our fingers with the sense of omega, and this thumb will give the direction of the axis. Can I scroll it now? One minute. Yes, I do. Sure. Okay, this is the next question. So I believe I should just note down the question first. I'm, I will draw the figure again.
so in the question you have a conductor a straight conductor this one conductor of length l and this conductor is rotating in a circular path it's just rotating with an angular velocity omega you can consider the motion of the blades of a fan there's one blade of fan that's rotating with an angular velocity omega and in your room you have some magnetic field so you are supposed to calculate the emf induced in the blades of the fan so to calculate the angular velocity what we do is we first consider a small element of this whole conductor of length dx at some separation x from the center so we consider a small element of length dx at a separation x from center of conductor the angular velocity of this small element is omega the radius of its path is x so if you have angular velocity and you have radius of path then how will you calculate the linear velocity hishma if you have angular velocity and you have radius of the path how will you calculate the linear velocity hishma uh, linear velocity will be angular velocity into radius of into radius of the path very good so this element dx will have a linear velocity which is omega into x so what for induced emf we can use this relation minus of blv instead of b we have b strength of magnetic field is b instead of length we have this length this this is small length dx and then we have b yes tell me what will be the expression of induced emf minus of b instead of l is dx and then this is the emf minus of dx i call this as equation number 2 and i call this as equation number is it clear yashika noha is it clear to you you see how you got the induced emf equation sir induced emf is minus of blv this equation the strength of magnetic field is b the length of the conductor is dx because we are calculating for dx length only so instead of l i put dx and v i put v okay see yes sir then i can substitute instead of this v i can substitute omega x so what i can do is i can put 1 in 2 so when i place 1 in 2 i get de is minus of b into dx into omega x so we get induced emf as minus of b omega x dx so this is the emf induced in this small n dx only for the entire conductor what will do will integrate it for em induced across the length of the conductor of length l so will integrate it from 0 to l so i integrate it from 0 to l so i just integrate the whole expression from 0 to l and when we integrate it what we get so just tell me what are the constant terms here b is a constant yeah, no, take, no. take these constants for you have x when you integrate x this is x square by 2 limit is 0 to x next what you can do is it's minus of b omega by 2 and you can substitute the limits it's l square minus 0 square so you can write that induced emf is minus of b omega l square divided by 2 so that is the induced emf minus b omega l square by 2 so this is the emf induced in the coil and this negative sign again shows that this is the lens law negative sign always represents lens law this is it this no read on so this is a very very important question if you uh, look at previous years question of uh, maybe of any exam neat cbsc je you will find this question there very very important question not at all 
So what we do here, we consider a small element, we calculate induced EMF for that small element, and then we integrate it over the entire species. Now we'll solve, you will solve two questions of NCRT. That will be your homework. Those two questions are very, very important. Six, 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 six. One is solved example. Oh, example number. Example number 6.6, .6. this is very important. Okay, I will write it here. Please note down your homework. Example 6.6. .6. Then, sorry, not 6.6, 6.6 .6 we already did, 6.8. Example 6.8. And then after 6.8, we will do two questions. One is question number 6.4. Six point four and six point six. It's these two questions. Question number 6.4 of NCRT and question number 6.6. If you can solve these questions, your motional EMF is over. If you don't solve these three questions, your motional EMF will be incomplete. I can I need two more lectures to finish this chapter. So maybe next week we'll finish. Sorry, linear velocity. Length element. Sorry? Sorry, linear velocity. Length element. Her element ke radius alag hoga na. Her element ka separation center se alag hoga. Dx yaha loge to alag hoga. यहां लोगे तो x कितना हो जाएगा यूनिम l l हो जाएगा so linear velocity अलग अलग हो गी हो गया yes इसी लिए तो integrate करना पड़ा है अगर ये constant होता तो integrate करने की जरूर है
Sir, uh, is this note already updated? Uh, uploaded in the link. Sure. This notes. Sure. These notes are also uploaded. That link have my entire notebook, so everything is there. So example 6.8. Mm -hmm. 6.8 and yes, and question 6.4 and 6.6. .6. Yes, written? Yes, sir. Okay, so that was about motional EMF. Now, in the next class, we will fin start that thing. Uh, we'll start induction. So, just two topics are left one is self induction, and another is mutual induction. So, let's start our revision for J. So, up to last lecture, in current electricity, we have finished uh, RC circuit. Huh? We did RC circuit. So see, in J, the chances, J mains especially, the chances of getting questions from RC circuit is less. The Usually, the type of question that you get from RC circuit is uh, the questions which have this thing, uh, steady state or at t equal to zero, at t equal to infinite. So the topic that we will be doing today is potentiometer. So, so I believe it's the last class for current electricity. From next class onwards, we'll be starting mathematics. In magnetics, there are very few questions uh, which are not in NCRT and are in JH syllabus. The major portion. Uh, Slibus difference between NCRT uh, and J slibus is in chapter number one and chapter number two.
So let's start with putting two into the schema once again. Let me show you how potentiometer looks like. Mm -hmm. See, uh, I, I taught you meter bridge also, but I, now I came to that meter bridge is, is also not in your syllabus. So this year meter bridge is not in your syllabus. We did meter bridge in the class, but meter bridge is not a part of syllabus. But definitely that can come in your J exams, J or NEET exams. So let's start with potential meter. So we use potential meter for measure voltage. Now the question arises: why we use potentiometer when we have voltmeter? You remember that voltmeter gives error when we measure voltage? You remember voltmeter? We did conversion of galvanometer and into ammeter and voltmeter, right? Voltmeter gives you error in current and voltage measurement. So when you have voltmeter, you can get some error while calculating your current and voltage, while measuring your voltage. Because itself in the uh, process through which we measure voltage through a voltmeter, there's error calculation. Voltmeter gives error. The reason is it withdraws some current from the circuit. On the other end, potentiometer is a device which don't have error. You can calculate exact voltage from a potentiometer. The reason is potentiometer does not uh, take any current from the circuit. It does not withdraw any current from the circuit. So it's a device used to measure EMF and internal resistance of the cell. We basically, we don't uh, directly measure internal resistance. We measure EMF and through EMF, we can measure the internal resistance of the cell. By the way, what is internal resistance, Yashika? Yashika. Sir, it is the resistance of a offered by the cell. Offered by the cell. And who offer that resistance in a cell? Sir, the electrolyte. Yeah, electrolytic solution and the electrodes of the cell. So the principle of potential meter is, if I, I will explain this principle when we uh, do some theory work. Otherwise, I can't explain principle at this stage. We'll do principle of potential meter in the next slide. So this is the construction of a typical potential meter. This potential meter have a wire, A, B wire. This is the potential meter wire. The whole measurement cross method is over this wire only. This wire has certain resistance. We call the resistance of the wire as small r. So small r is not the internal resistance. Small r is the resistance of your potentiometer wire. This is the resistance of potentiometer wire. Potentiometer wire. Now let's do some simple calculation. Let's calculate the current. How much will be the current in the circuit? You have one external resistor, you have one resistance of potentiometer, and this is the cell which gives current to the potentiometer wire. How will you calculate current? Anyone? It's an open uh, question to all. Capital R plus small r plus internal resistance of the cell. No, there's no internal resistance in the cell. Huh? We, at least for the sake of discussion, we are. Yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, it's total EMF by total resistance. Very good. So it's E divided by R plus R. That's the current in the circuit. Huh? That's E by R plus R. Now the resistance of the potentiometer wire is small r. So uh, Cephala, what is the voltage across small r? The current through this is I. Huh? So I you R. have two resistors in series. That's it. I R. So the voltage will be I R. Huh? And I is this E by R plus R. So I can write this as potential voltage across the potentiometer wire is E by R plus R into small r. Now the length of the potentiometer wire is L. I need voltage per unit length. So uh, Akshay, what you will do to get voltage across unit length? This is the voltage across the entire length of the wire. This is the voltage across length. Voltage by length. Very good. This is voltage across L length. 
for unit length what we do is we'll divide it by l and this voltage per unit length is known as gradient potential gradient voltage per unit length of the wire so we take voltage and divide it by the length the entire working of potentiometer is based on this uh, gradient k everything depends upon this gradient k. if you know how to calculate the gradient k then the else the rest of the calculation is very very easy what should be its unit arpit what should be the si unit of potential gradient uh uni what should be the si unit of potential gradient sir volt per meter volt per meter should be the si unit now this is a simple straight formula based question so uh, i will skip this question huh? this is very very straight forward now if i plot a graph between voltage versus length see if i take the length to the left hand side then you will get b a b is equal to k l what should be the shape of the graph noah if i plot voltage versus length on y axis i take voltage and on x axis i take length then what's the uh, shape of the graph straight line ellipse hyperbola uh, straight lines straight line right it's is a linear relation vab is one power l is one power the graph will be a straight line so i plot the graph a straight line yashika how will you calculate the slope of this graph so tan theta tan theta and what will be the tan theta tan theta is perpendicular upon this tan theta will be v by l and what is v by l akshay okay gradient k Okay. So the slope of this graph will give gradient so if you take v by l you will get gradient slope of the graph is gradient and there is another thing sensitivity sensitivity is the ability of your potentiometer to measure very small resistance so you have two potentiometer one can measure up to 1 millivolt another can measure up to 2 millivolt so the one which can measure up to 1 millivolt is more sensitive than the one which can measure 2 millivolt so the sensitivity is this is the sensitivity so the potential meter which have the smaller value of k is more sensitive the smaller the value of k that a potential meter can measure is the can, potential meter can measure is the measure of its sensitivity the smaller the value of k greater with this will be the sensitivity now let's do a straight forward question this is from the again from the previous year so you have two potential meters one is a and which is b minashi can you tell me which one is more uh, sensitive a or b just by looking at this diagram can you tell me which one is more sensitive b why hmm. okay just tell me which one have higher value of k a or b b b have higher value of k right very good nabil you right b have higher value of k so the one having higher value of k is less sensitive Theta two is greater than theta one. That means slope of B is greater than slope of one, and slope is represented in k. So that means uh, if theta two is greater than theta one, k B is greater than k one, and the one having smaller value of k is more sensitive. So this potentiometer A, which have a smaller value of k, is more sensitive. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Any doubt up to this point? No, sir. Okay, just note it down. Slope and sensitivity part in this sir. Sorry, sensitivity part again, ah. Huh? Yes, sir. So sensitivity simply means the ability of potential meter to small small resistance, small voltage. So if you have two potential meter, one can measure up to one millivolt, another can measure up to two millivolt. So we'll say that one, the one which can measure one millivolt is more sensitive than the other one, and the sensitivity is inversely proportional to K. smaller the value of k greater would be the sensitivity this is the sensitivity why k and sensitivity are inversely proportional this again i can explain once we start the application of range meter in the yes. first application you will understand why i'm saying that k and sensitivity are inversely proportional please note it down note down the principle also i will explain it in the first application in the very first application you will know why what's the meaning of this uh, principle
Tell me once you have written scroll it off. They deleted the easiest part of the stables, like meter bridge and potentiometer uh, were the easiest and the scoring portion. Yes, written. One minute. Yes, I done. Written, can I scroll it further? Yes, sir. So it is raised to power R. Which one? Uh, v equals to epsilon by R plus R. Into R. This into is IR. R. IR is current integral distance.
Yes, can I scroll it further? Yes, sir. So the potential gradient equation can show me. Yes, Yeah, this is probably collapsing. Um, sir, can you show the question? Yeah, I'm coming to it. Yes, the next one. This previous question? This one? No, no, no. no, 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 no you right. Yes.
Yes, written. One minute. 